I come from this little town in Minnesota. It's in the geographic center of the state. That's why it's not on any maps, because they surveyed Minnesota from the four corners, and when they got to the middle, they discovered that they had more of the state than there was room for <laughs> within the boundaries, some of which were rivers and couldn't be fudged on, so they had to overlap the inner corners, and my town wound up on the bottom flab. <laughs> It's a place where every year in January and February, nature makes a serious attempt to kill you. <laughs> so we are kind of partly New Age and partly Ice Age. <laughs> Somehow like the cold weather. For us, cold takes the place of personal guilt for a few months. Maybe you're not the person that you ought to be, but... In January is no time to be thinking about this. <laughs> After January and February comes March, of course, a month which was designed by God for people who don't drink to show them what a hangover is like. <laughs> it's a month that extends into April and sometimes into May. It's in March of 1851 that the first Norwegians arrived in Lake Wobegon. They'd come over on account of the great herring famine <laughs> previous winter. And they'd wandered across America heading west, and they were stricken with this wrenching homesickness. And they came to Minnesota and to Lake Wobegon, and they saw land that reminded them of Norway and they settled there, forgetting that the reason they had left Norway <laughs> was that the land was so poor. So. <laughs> I come from country people who woke up before the sun every morning, and they got up and they took their chamber pots out, and they emptied them out in the outhouse. And they came back in and they washed their faces in cold water out of a steel basin and they put on clean clothes that smelled of lye soap and they went out to the barn and they milked 12 cows. They came back in, sat down to breakfast, flapjacks and cornbread and coffee. Then we all went into the front parlor and we read a chapter of scripture and not a, always a comforting or encouraging chapter either. <laughs> Often we dwelt on prophecy longer than a boy would have wished. <laughs> we were sanctified brethren, so we were strict people. These were people who put the fun into fundamentalism. Boy, they were. <laughs> they meant business all the way. But when my grandma went off to visit the neighbors, my Aunt Eva would sit down at the piano and she'd pour us a glass of lemonade. And we'd pretend it was gin. <laughs> and we.